Hello my beloved scholars, welcome back to the Kemet Masai Academy. Today we're going to be looking at sets. We're continuing our vast series of videos on sets at the grade 4 and grade 5 level. Remember we also have videos on sets at high school level. Today we're going to be focusing on equal and equivalent sets. If you want to find out further about sets, for example, infinite, finite sets, subsets, number of elements in the set, etc., just check the playlist and get the video you need. I'm going to stop now for a minute and ask you please to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. The more subscriptions we have, the more the videos will be accessible to other students right the more subscription the more the videos will go out there so other students can have access to them and benefit from them just as you are benefiting now don't forget to leave a comment just to say thank you miss if you have been helped and also just let me know what you think about the videos and if you want me to do a particular topic that you have not seen in the playlist so let's go let's look at equal and equivalent sets what are those i always stress when you come upon terms in mathematics the first thing you should think about is how is the word used in the general language because many times most times the very same definition of the word as used in the general language is how the word is used in math or, or other subjects, or at least it is inspired by the general uses. So grab your dictionary, look for the word equal, look for the word equivalent. When two things are equal, they are exactly the same. So equal sets are exactly the same. The elements in the two sets are identical in number and in type. The exact same elements. It does not matter the order. So let's look at our definition. Right? The definition says two sets are equal if they have the exact same elements. The elements are identical in the type of elements as well as the number of elements. The order or arrangement of the elements does not matter. So, for example, here we have three sets, and we're going to compare them. Set A has 6, 8, and 10. Those are the elements in set A. The cardinality is 3 because there are three elements. Set B has 4, 5, 8, 10. The cardinality is 4. There are four elements. And set C has 10 8 and 6, the cardinality is 3. There are 3 elements. Set A is equal to set C because set A has 6, 8, and 10. And set C also has 6, 8, and 10. They are not in the same order, but remember we say for sets to be equal, it doesn't matter how we arrange the elements as long as they are exactly the same, identical elements. Set A is not equal to set B and this is the symbol we use, the equal sign, right? Equal sign when two sets are equal. If they are not equal, we put a stroke through it to indicate they are not equal. So sets A and B are not equal because even though set B has 8 and 10 which are also in set A, Set B does not have the 6 and it has two additional elements that are not in A. So these two sets are not equal. Set B is not equal to C. Because even though it has the 8 and the 10 like C, it doesn't have the 6 and it has two additional elements. So set A is equal to set C. They have the same cardinality, same three elements, three identical elements even though we shifted the arrangement, but the elements are the same. Set B has a cardinality of 4, so we know it is not equal to A or C. 
Now let's look at equivalences. As used in the general language, equivalent means almost the same, round about the same, but there are some differences, right? So, two sets are equivalent if they have the same number or cardinality of elements. The type of elements doesn't matter. The elements can be completely different. One set might have numbers, another set might have letters, another set might have objects, another set might have names of people. It doesn't matter. The type of elements, the important thing for the equivalent set is the cardinality. How many elements are there? So there must be a one-to-one -one correspondent for the sets to be equivalent. And this squiggly guy here is what? This is the symbol that's used. Just, just draw a little squiggly. Um, they're the same kind of squiggly lines you used to, to do when you were just learning to write. Equivalent. That's a symbol. And of course, not equivalent would be that same squiggly line with a line drawn through it. Because that's generally how we indicate not. So, one-to-one -one correspondence means this one match with that one this one match with that one so basically the same cardinality in all there must be the same number of elements we should be able to match to pair them up to match them up with each other that's what we mean by one to one correspondence so let's look at these sets set p has a circle a square and a triangle because remember sets, you can have a set of anything. Set of shapes, set of numbers, set of cars, whatever. So this is a set of shapes, the circle, the square, the triangle. Set Q has a circle, a square, a triangle, and this strange looking guy here, which we're going to call a star. We can probably call it a star. Very odd star, but it can be called a star. And set R has some letters B, C, and D. Now, let's look at the cardinality because remember, when we want to determine if sets are equivalent, the most important thing is the cardinality. How many elements are there? When we count up the elements, how many are there? It don't matter if they are the same elements. We just want to know how many so the number in P, the number in set P as one, two, three. Cardinality is three. The number in Q, one, two, three, four. The cardinality of set four is of set Q is four. And the number in R, B, C, D, the cardinality of set R is three. Alright, so are these sets equivalent? Is set P equivalent to set Q? Do they have the same cardinality? No, they don't. So P is not equivalent to Q. Is P equivalent to R? Do they have the same cardinality? Yes, they do. There are three elements in P, three elements in R, even though they are not identical. These are shapes, these are letters. It doesn't matter. We just want to know how many do they have the same number of elements. If we were deciding if they are equal, then the type would also matter in addition to the cardinal. So, set P is equivalent to R. Is set Q equivalent to set R? So, since the cardinality of set Q is 4, and the cardinality of set R is 3, we know they are absolutely not equivalent. So, we just put a stroke through that. They are not equivalent. Okay? Set P is not equivalent to set Q. Set P is equivalent to set R. Set Q is not equivalent to set R. What have we found then? 
Remember for equal sets, they have to be exactly the same and have the same cardinality. That tells us that, therefore, all equal sets are automatically equivalent. If two sets are equal, they are automatically equivalent because to be equal, you must have the same number of elements in addition to being the same type of exact same type. They must have the same number. So that means once they are equal, they are also equivalent. So all equal sets are automatically equivalent. Are all equivalent sets equal though? No. Because... They can have the same cardinality, they can have the same number of elements, but the elements might not be the same type. So they can be equivalent and not equal. But once they are equal, they are equivalent. So it's time now, of course, you know I love to give you examples for us to work together because that's how we test to see if we're really getting it. So here we have four examples. And we are going to determine, are these sets equal? Are they equivalent? Are they neither equal nor equivalent? And we are going to use the symbols. So, set C has the null set sign. It has a square. It has a triangle with a line going across the top. Set B has a triangle with a line going across the top. It has the null set symbol. It has a square. Are these two sets equal? Do they have the exact same elements, which means the same number of elements? Yes, they do. Here we have null set, square triangle with line across so they are equal and automatically equivalent so we're going to write c is equal to b or we could have said b is equal to c c is also equivalent to b or b is equivalent to c they are equal and equivalent exact same elements and of course exact number of elements so let's look at number two w is the set of factors of 10 so it wasn't listed it was just described but we can list it if we want to see we want to be able to count them to determine are they the same elements or do they have the same cardinality as set D. Set D has elements 1, 2, 5, 10. So let us list out the elements of set W just so that we can do our checks. So set W, what are the factors of 10? What are all the X's that meet this requirement? All the possible numbers that meet this requirement? We know that whenever we're listing the factors of a number, we start with 1 because 1 is a universal factor. 1 is a factor of every number. And we know we are going to end with the number itself since the number is a factor of itself. It's the last factor of itself. It's the biggest factor that can go into itself. So, the factors of 10 would be 1. What else can go exactly into 10 without leaving a remainder? 2. 2 can go. 3 can't go, 4 can't go without leaving a remainder. 5 can definitely go into 10. And 6 can't go into 10. 7 can't go without a remainder. 8 can't go without a remainder. The next factor that can go into 10 is 10. So, now that we have listed the factors of 10, we realize or I'm hoping you realize that they are identical to the elements of set D. 
Now that we have listed them, we realize they are identical. So this means that set D is equal to set W, and we know that once they are equal, they are automatically equivalent. So we can also go ahead and say set D is equivalent to set W. So let's look at number three. Set P has elements Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Set M has elements June, February, March. Are these two sets equal? Do they have the exact same elements? Well, no, they don't because set P has some days of the week, set M has some days, some months of the year, two different types of elements. They are definitely not equal. So P is not equal to M. But are they equivalent? Let's check the cardinality. The number of elements in P, one, two, three, and the number of elements in M, one, two, three, they have the same cardinality and that's all we need for them to be equivalent. That's all we need is for them to have the same number of elements, the same cardinality. So they do have it. So we can say P is equivalent to M. They are not equal, but they are equivalent. Number four, set Z has elements one, three, five, seven. Set W has elements eight, ten, twelve. We see very clearly that they are not identical. They are, they are different. The numbers are different. They are not identical. So we can go straight to say Z is not equal to W. Let's check if they are equivalent. Let's see the cardinality. The number in Z is 1, 2, 3, 4. The number of elements in W, 1, 2, 3. Are they equivalent? Do they have the same cardinality? No, they don't. One has four elements, one has three. They are not equivalent. So Z is not equivalent to W. They are not equal, they are not equivalent either. Okay? So, that's it. That's how we decide if two sets are equal or if they are equal and equivalent or if they are neither equal nor equivalent. If they have the exact same elements, identical elements, even if they are rearranged, but the exact same elements, then they are equal. If they have the exact same number of elements, even if the elements are different in how they look, but the same number of elements, then they are equivalent. And if the elements are different and the number of elements different, they are neither equal nor equivalent. I really hope that you have benefited from this video and if you have, I would appreciate it if you would leave a comment to say thank you miss. Let me know how you found the video and let me know if you want me to do a video on any particular topic. Also if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel so that other students can see the channel more visibly in their search share the video so others may benefit just as you have and my scholars stay commit stay committed to your learning stay committed to your education keep watching the videos so that you can benefit i will see you in the next video